And a very good morning to you, of course. It is that time of the month where we are joined by our resident medico, Dr. Clara Chu from the guys at Life Medical Centre. A very big month too for the month of February for uh, our topic today, especially it is to do, it is Red Feb, which is Heart Research Month. And uh, Dr. Clara, can you tell us what is Red Feb? Yeah, sure. So Red Feb is Heart Research Month, as you said, um, and it's all about raising awareness about the devastating impact that heart disease has on families, friends and communities and the importance of supporting life-saving research. Now this one might be a bit of a captain obvious, but uh, why is heart health so important to us? Yeah, so heart health is central to um, overall good health um, because the heart is responsible for pumping our nutrient-rich blood throughout our bodies. Um, It supplies us oxygen, removes the toxins and waste. And so if your heart's not working well, the rest of your body suffers. Yeah, sure. Uh, What are some of the most common heart issues that people face? I know that's a question that a lot of us probably see in the media, but, you know, we may not, we may only think just one or two things, but there there are a few, aren't there? Yeah, there are a few. So, I mean, the most common is um, what we call coronary heart disease. Um, so, you know, to the um, average person, that's more commonly known as a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when there is damage or disease in the heart's major arteries. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, obviously, if that happens, then the heart can stop functioning. And then, as we all know, if the heart stops functioning, blood stops pumping around sure. and around our body. Um, a second one is stroke. So we don't often think of stroke as a heart disease, mm-hmm. um, but a stroke is caused by damage um, or disease in the bloods, um, in the brain, sorry, um, in the brain's major blood vessels. Cool. So again, you know, it's the, the heart health, it, it, while it sounds like it's just all about the heart, it's also all about our arteries and our veins. Sure. Um, so the blood vessels which supply to our organs. Um, and then the third common one is probably heart failure. So that's a chronic condition where the heart, which is itself a muscle, um, doesn't pump blood as well as it should anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, you know, coronary artery disease, that's the most common. Um, and it can cause, it causes about 11% of all deaths in Australia, um, while strokes can cause around 5% of all deaths in Australia. So, you know, if we looked at it in a different way, um, heart disease accounts for almost 7% of the total burden of disease. And that's a wow. statistic that came from um, 2015. Mm-hmm. And, you know, costs our health system about $2.2 billion. That's amazing. And what factors uh, commonly contribute to poor heart health? So obviously that is a big factor. You know, a lot of things, a lot of people want to look at that to go, okay, how am I going to keep myself healthy? Yep. So this is the question. Yeah, look, a number of risk factors will contribute towards um, poor heart health. So the Heart Foundation website has helpfully listed them for us in a few categories. So, you know, I'll go through them with us um, yeah, to see why they're important. So firstly, we have lifestyle risk factors. So we talk about things like smoking, having an unhealthy mm-hmm. diet, um, being physically inactive or less active than we should be, being overweight or obese, um, and also drinking too much alcohol. So they're lifestyle things that we can uh, modify. And then there are health conditions that people can acquire that increase our risk. So having high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, even mental health issues, um, which we've discussed in the past, Mm -hmm. um, can increase your risk of heart problems. And then finally, there are other risk factors that we can't easily control as individuals. So for example, things like a family history of heart disease, for women um, going through menopause, being of certain um, ethnicities. So for example, South Asian, Middle Eastern, Maori or Pacific Islander. Um, and you know, there's been studies to show that even people with the, in, from a so- lower socioeconomic background um, can increase your risk of having a heart problem. We are joined, of course, this morning for this uh, fe- month of February for Red Feb. Our uh, resident medico is uh, in the chair with us here in the studios, Dr. Calera Chu from Life Medical Centre. We'll be taking a quick break. We'll be back right after this. And we are back with our resident medico, Dr. Calera Chu, is in the studio with us this morning. And of course, we're talking about heart health. It is Red Feb for the month of February. And uh, Dr. Clara, what are some of the most common signs or symptoms of heart problems? Yeah, look, the most common um, symptom of heart problems is that there can be no symptoms. Yeah, that's um, a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, and that's why it's super important to go and see your GP regularly, especially if you're over the age of 40 or 50. Mm-hmm. 
um, you know, come in and see one of us, you know, every year just for, you know, routine blood just tests, check your blood check pressure, up. that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, but otherwise, some of the symptoms can be um, things that we know about, like things like chest pain, chest tightness, anything to do with like discomfort in the chest. Sure. Um, sometimes it can be pains in the neck, the jaw, the throat, um, the upper tummy area um, or your back. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes people can be, you know, having episodes of fainting. Um, so that's also important to get it checked out. Irregular heartbeats, feeling fatigue, feeling short of breath, swollen um, feet and ankles sure. are also a sign because that suggests that your blood vessels aren't working quite as well as they yep. should. Um, so if you find yourself experiencing any of these symptoms, get medical help, um, especially if you're su suffering from any chest symptoms, in which case, you know, it becomes a bit more urgent. Sure. So leading on from that question, now what is, uh, this is a very important one too, so as an individual, what can we do about our own heart health? Yeah, great question, and it's a big one. Um, so, you know, there are a few things, as we talked about earlier, that people can do. Um, so the first thing is, if you're a smoker, quit smoking. Yep, that's a um, that's an obvious one, that one, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, smoking's been consistently linked to an increased risk of um, coronary heart disease. And so quitting smoking will reduce your risk of having a heart attack and stroke. Mm -hmm. Super easy, that one. Um, not so much necessarily the action, <laughs> exactly but you know, right. the evidence is very, very clear about that. Yeah. Um, next would be eating a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that pretty much everyone, you know, everyone has to eat. Sure. Um, and by this, I would be suggesting that for every meal, you should have at least half a plate of colorful fruit and vegetables, mm -hmm. um, just under a quarter of a plate of proteins and then under a quarter of a plate of, um, of what we call healthy carbs. So sure. whole grains, legumes um, and starchy vegetables yep. fall into that category. And then a dash of healthy fats in the form of extra virgin olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and then as doctors after that, we always would love to see people move more. Yeah. Um, we, you know, the current physical activity guidelines um, in Australia recommends that adults are active on most days um, and preferably every day with at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week. Yep. So if we were to break that down, that would be sort of, you know, roughly 30 minutes, five days a week mm -hmm. um, or something that makes you feel huffed and puffed. Sure. Now, the reason for this kind of recommendation and, you know, why I would love it to see, you know, more people become more active um, is because in the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare survey from 2017, 2018, just over half um, of adults, so 55%, did not meet the recommended physical activity guidelines. Wow, that's so, a massive stat. Yeah, so, and, and, then, uh, and then from that, only 15% of adults meet both the physical activity and muscle strengthening guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about, you know, going out there and doing walks and runs, it's about actually, you know, doing some resistance It'll training, work your body, yeah. weight training and yep. that, those kind of things. Um, so as a nation, we can definitely do a be lot better in moving our bodies sure. more. Um, and then hopefully by eating healthily and moving more, we can address the next risk factor, which is being overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. um, to put it simply, excess weight can lead to um, fatty material building up in our arteries, which in turn then increases the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. So it's not about how we look on the outside, but it's mm. more about what the excess fat is doing to our sure. internal organs. Sure which we don't always see. We see it as, oh, I, you know, I don't look great, yeah. but it's actually more about what the fat is doing. It's that visceral fat, isn't it, on the, around the organs and things? Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, and one of the things that I've learned in recent years is that, you know, um, fat, we like to see it as just neutral. It's actually not neutral. It's actually um, sort of almost like an organ in itself sure. making hormones that are not good for us yeah. um, and creating inflammation and you know it's as if our body's just upset all the time mm -hmm. um, so you know in terms of weight loss it, it's not so much just about how people look um, it's actually about what it's doing to to our bodies on the inside wow. um, and then finally with alcohol we strongly recommend sticking to the current Australian alcohol guidelines um, and they say that healthy men and women should drink no more than 10 standard drinks a week and no more than four standard drinks on any one day. Um, and so the less you drink, the lower your risk of harm from alcohol, you know, in many aspects um, of your health, yeah. not just for your heart. It's something we really have to work on here in Australia, isn't it? Because we, I guess, generally in the culture, 
alcohol plays a huge part in our lives yeah, for a absolutely. lot of different people. So, yeah, just making sure that we do it, but uh, do it in moderation, do it safely so that we can try and avoid some of these problems. So mm. how often should we have heart checks? That is probably the main thing we need to get through this morning. And, yeah. uh, and what do they typically involve? Yeah, look, an annual heart health check is recommended by the Heart Foundation for everyone 45 years and, and over. Mm-hmm. Um, so a heart health check is sort of roughly 20 minutes health assessment of your heart and any associated risk factors. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'd be measuring your risk of a heart attack over the next few years and how you can reduce that risk. So, um, you know, in the way that I work um, at both of the practices where I work at, I would be assessing a patient's lifestyle, specifically smoking and alcohol, checking your blood pressure, um, organizing some blood tests, fasting blood tests. So, you know, looking for high cholesterol, diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, In some instances, depending on the patient, we might organize an ECG. So that's to check the electrical activity of the heart. Sure. Um, it can give us a clue as to whether there's any um, abnormalities with someone's rhythm or whether they've actually already suffered some, some heart injuries mm-hmm. too, in some cases. Um, and then there's um, a test called a calcium score, um, which is a fairly new test that's come out in the last number yep. of years. Um, it measures the amount of calcified plaque that you have in those arteries. Um, so that can either be organized through a cardiologist or through your GP. Um, the test, unfortunately, when organised through a GP, is not Medicare rebateable, so sure. it costs a few hundred dollars. But I've had a number of patients do it because they've got a family history of heart disease, and it's provided them a great deal of reassurance as mm-hmm. to whether they're currently at risk or whether you know they should just keep doing the things that they've been doing. I guess if we want peace of mind in that, it's well worth the investment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, because you know we know that coronary plaque, so you know having those additional calcium bits sure. inside your arteries um, is the main underlying causes of heart attack and stroke mm-hmm. along with you know cholesterol buildup and sure. those kind of things um, so it's been yeah you know really useful and it's something to for people where if they've got a strong family history of heart disease or stroke it's a you know it's something to think about and something to ask their GP about as always an absolute uh, joy and a pleasure to have you in the studios with us this morning Dr Clara of course from Life Medical Centre and we'll be back to do it all again next month with some more big health topics stay with us we've got some more great stuff coming up right after this